Industrial my ass. It's harmless phosphorescence. <laughs> We're off to a great start this week, everybody. Al, you're getting the tag. I'll clean it up. I'll put it on there. Hello, everyone. This is Thoreau Smiley, and I know I'm ugly. Who's joining me this week? I'm Josh CC, and my street cred is low. I'm Brian Lesh, and I'm not a baby. I'm a tumor. <laughs> Let me remind you why you once feared the dark. I'm Alaric Weber. And this is Harmless Phosphorescence. It's the podcast where we watch every theatrically released full-length live-action superhero movie ever made. We gather some research into the production and the source material, then we tell you all about it. This show is brought to you by our patrons. Patrons like executive producers Michael Beckwith and Atticus Burkett. You can be a patron, too. Head on over to patreon.com slash harmless entertainment. We got a lot of bonus stuff there. Um, and additionally, you know, if you're listening to this uh, on podcast form, then please uh, rate and review us. Just hit the stars. You know, you don't actually have to write anything. We'd prefer it if you did, but just hit the stars. <laughs> please. Hit the stars. Hit the stars. That's our new uh, That's our new uh, uh, slogan. Your reality TV show. Yeah. Hit, the- <laughs> hit the stars. <laughs> oh, that would be oh man wouldn't it um so yeah uh it's the best way for people to discover us um it uh really really will help us out so give us a rate rate and a review uh meanwhile this week on harmless phosphorescence we are going to be watching hellboy 2 the golden army now for our next item the royal crown of beth mora a piece from a long lost culture lost not at all. Very much alive. And I am here to reclaim what is rightfully mine. Call security! When our world is threatened, I have returned to wage war and reclaim our land. My forces beyond our understanding. <laughs> Our government turns to an elite, top-secret organization. We're moving up. We had over 70 guests reported. We have no survivors. Same story here, babe. Don't call me babe. Hey, I said, hey. Red, we have company. My father died to uphold the truce with your world. I will call upon the help of all the children of the earth. The good. The bad. Give it up, nasty. We can see it. You see me? How? How do you see me? And the worst. The Golden Army. The unstoppable force. Oh, crap. I wouldn't do that if I were you. They're afraid of you. You have more in common with us than with them, demon. Excuse me. Make the choice. You woke up the baby. All right, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, uh, released uh, July 11th, 2008, a running time of 120 minutes. Uh, it had a budget of $85 million and it took in 168 at the box office. So it wasn't a huge hit, but it, it doubled its money. Almost. Yeah, I mean, that's the objective, right? Yeah, well, I mean, what, they say, I mean, they say at triple is when it's, they consider it like a hit. I think right, that made money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when they consider it a worthwhile thing to do. So when you only profit $85 million, it's very disappointing. I read an article recently. Uh, I don't know, but um, a lot of these studios don't necessarily make money. They just, they keep making enough money to keep making enough product. 
Yeah. Now, obviously, there has to be some return, but you know what I mean? Like, the majority of what comes in has to go back out immediately. It's kind of wild. Well, yeah, there's that. Well, and see, well, that's the thing is that the the entity, you know, Disney Studios or Paramount Studios, whatever it is, the entity doesn't make money. But all the people that are in charge right. of them, they make tons of money. Right. Which you'd have to pay them with the money made from your yeah. product anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know. Um, I don't know. I thought it should have done better personally. Um, but uh, speaking, I agree. yeah, it was a, it was it was a lot of fun. What did it open against? Well, we'll find out because we're <laughs> going to play the box office top ten game. This is the game where uh, I will read the top ten movies of the week for the week of July eleventh, two thousand eight, using only the box office mojo descriptions. And the guys here are going to try to guess uh, what movie I'm describing. They're also going to guess where they think Hellboy 2 opened. Um, why don't we uh, go ahead and start? Brian, we'll start with you. Where do you think this opened? Number three. Brian says three. Uh, Al, where are you going with it? Um, I'll go with two. Al goes two. Josh? I liked three, so I'm going to go four. Josh goes four. All right, so here we go. This is... The box office top 10. Um, there is going to be some overlap here with last week since the, what was it? What was, what was it? Hancock? Is that what we did last week? Yes. Yeah. That was just a week earlier. So um, <laughs> this movie set in Cincinnati at the height of the Great Depression. A resourceful young girl helps her mother run a boarding house after her father loses his job. What? Oh, this is the American doll. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that same uh, American. Anyone yeah. remember what whatever, it was called? Whatever her name was. A werewolf oh, in London. Kit, Kit Kitteridge. Kit Kitteridge, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. An American that. American werewolf in London. <laughs> <laughs> An American girl. Oh, uh, if yeah. Oh, uh, okay. American wear girl. An American wear girl. <laughs> Because she or was an American wear girl. <laughs> she was <laughs> an American werewolf <laughs> in London. <laughs> only they only went there. They didn't buy your real passes. Uh, All right. Coming in number at nine. number nine, an angry man <laughs> tries to not be angry. <laughs> Kid Kitterich. Incredible Hulk. Yes. Incredible oh, Hulk. Al, you get an incredible Hulk. point. <laughs> what incredible point. Hey. Oh, yeah. And, even, uh, though I, I, even though I'm ashamed, did I get anything for Kit Kitterich? Yeah, well, okay. So, so Al guessed the American doll. You guessed Kit Kitterich. So you both. Oh, right. So um, you each get half a point <laughs> in <laughs> London. I'll you, keep, you, you each Josh, get. I'll let you. I'll let you keep the whole point on the weekend. All right. I will let you have the top half of the doll on weekend. <laughs> um, keep that bottom half of the doll. It's the good yeah. part. I, we could cut it down the side. God, down it's the American mirror. Doll. That's so dark. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even seen one of those. Okay. Coming, uh, in oh, at num- yeah. coming in at number eight. Again, the Dragon Warrior. Has to clash against the savage Tai Lung as China's fate hangs in the balance. Kung Fu Panda. This is the fourth time this has been on our list. It's been here that all year popular. long. This, this movie is made the most successful movie, right? Yeah, this made a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, it made six hundred million dollars. Wow! Right, right now we're really only testing our memory of last week. <laughs> yep. I'm impressed. Yeah. I barely remember yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, so everybody, I only, I only remember American Girl dolls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a condition and it's terrible. <laughs> um, nobody gets any points for that because Jack Black has them all. Um, number seven, opening this week. Oh God, this movie. A crew of miniature aliens operate a spaceship that has a human form. While trying to save their planet, the aliens encounter a new problem as their ship becomes smitten with an Earth woman. 
<laughs> the okay. ship. Because why does this ship have sentience? This is like um, it's one word, right? Yes. Yeah. Not aliens, but it's. <laughs> Actually, no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's, oh, I was getting it mixed up with another movie that has a similar title. This has two words. Oh, I see. Um, this isn't K Pax, right? No. Lever. It stars. Lever. It stars Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy, oh. and Eddie Murphy. What? <laughs> oh. It's. Oh. It's called Meet Dave. Oh, that's right. I, this. Yeah. I remember that. I didn't see it, but yeah. Um, I now can remember Eddie Murphy's head coming apart. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the uh, poster just has a little Eddie Murphy sticking out of a big Eddie Murphy's ear. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see a doctor. Uh, number six. Uh, a highly intellectual but bumbling spy working for the control agency is tasked with preventing a terrorist attack from rival spy agency chaos. Starring last week. Yeah, starring Steve Carell as Get Smart. Yeah, get smart. For that you get points. <laughs> Sweet. They're Mel Brooks. You. Mel Brooks and Buck Henry um, wrote Get Smart. Not that movie, but the show. The wow. Show. Buck Henry. Lovely. Buck Henry. Uh, it still yeah. sounds like a porn the name to me. <laughs> yeah, totally. Always will. Yep. Always will. Uh, coming in at number five, a frustrated office worker learns that he is the son of a professional assassin. <laughs> and he, <laughs> there's no toner in the copier. <laughs> He finds out because, like, she got an invitation to the assassin reunion. (laughs) What? Uh, A frustrated office worker. So everyone, Uh, I I don't remember the name of this one. You actually looked it up, Al. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. I did. So determined that it was not going to be on our list. Yeah. Um, It's called Wanted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I was going to say one. I thought it was longer. Mm. I was going to say wanted dot dot dot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just just. I, did, I didn't, so no points. Yeah, you wanted points, but you did not get them. <laughs> Coming in at I would have loved if the title to that movie was that dot dot <laughs> just ellipses. Yeah. Just ellipses. Oh. You just know after that one word. Okay. Like, <laughs> just <dot. laughs> yeah, that would be very mysterious. <laughs> next? Right. Um, coming in at what number are we on? Uh, coming in at number four, Sad Robot. Wally. Wally. Oh, I yes. didn't guess it. That was also. I had number four. Yeah. Opening this week. Oh, fuck this movie. Okay. Opening this week. On a quest to find out what happened to his missing brother, a scientist, his nephew, and their mountain guide. Oh, <laughs> Go on a journey. What? Everest? <laughs> no. Um, wait, and dis- Never discover a fantastic and dangerous lost world. Oh, Land of the Lost? No. Land of the Found. I actually saw Lost World. No, um, it's uh, it's it's that that genre though. That era. It was based on books from that era. Um, Journey oh. to the Center of the Earth. Uh, uh, yeah. This That's was the rock, right? it was a terrible movie. It was really bad. Um, and I like that rock. I, bet it was <laughs> I like that rock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, coming in at number two, a superhero whose ill-considered behavior regularly causes damage in the millions. All right, Al got Hellboy. Hellboy, two. No, that's Hancock. That's Hancock. Oh, that's oh. right. We oh. Are <laughs> Describing similar. Hellboy or Hancock is similar. Wow. Yeah, interesting. Uh, okay, yeah, that was Hancock, still on the list. It was from just last week. 
Um, and number one, a prince of the mythical world. The mythical world Just starts the... a rebellion. Well, I have questions about the mythical world. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, against humanity in order to rule the earth and Hellboy... And his team must fight to stop him from locating the all-powerful Golden Army. I don't know if that description is accurate. I don't think so. Uh, so, number one, nobody gets it this week. Um, you all underestimated Hellboy for the last time. We must Sorry, have had a Ron. quick drop-off after this weekend. Do you uh, know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, like you said, it almost doubled, but that's not big in the terms of box office. So. Yeah, no, it did thirty-two yeah. million this week. So, you know, that's oh, okay. Another thirty. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So uh, that's it for the box office top ten. Uh, this does. This was based on comic books. Um, we talked about Hellboy previously, but is there uh, any new? Ha- has new information come to light? Now? <laughs> <laughs> there has. Um... Uh, new characters, new characters for this movie. Well, new character, um, I suppose. Uh, Johan Kraus, mm. created by Mike Mignola, first appeared in BPRD Hollow Earth number one, January 2002. Uh, to put that in relation to Hellboy media history, uh, the first Hellboy comic, comic came out in 1994. And the first Hellboy movie was in 2004. Okay. So, eight years after the start of Hellboy, two years before the first movie. Okay. Johann Johann Kraust was born in Stuttgart, North Germany in 1946. He became aware of his psychic abilities at the age of 10. He would turn to occultism and then the church in an effort to help the spirits that would appear to him. Kraus opened his own um, psychic office in 1971 at the age of 25. Becoming <laughs> He's a like, well res- you don't need to come to us, we'll call you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's a psychic office, but it's like, he's, <laughs> like just they just do regular office work. <laughs> that happened yeah. to be psychic. <laughs> but psychically. Yes. Yeah, just ahead um, of time. And he would become a well-respected medium in Germany. In 2002... <laughs> like Hasselhoff. The only- <laughs> yeah, I'm a well-respected extra large in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> in 2002, Johann Kraus was the only survivor of a disastrous seance. While his body was incinerated... <laughs> His ectoplasmic form survived. Oh, naturally. Krauss sought out the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense to help keep his ectoplasmic form from dissipating. Uh, he was at first sustained in a large transparent tank apparatus before the construction of his more human shaped containment suit. It was said by BPRD field leader. Um, oh, I didn't write it, write her name down. Whatever. It was Kate something. Um, that Krauss was uh, not dead. He just doesn't have a body anymore. <laughs> so he's not a ghost? Checks out. Uh, yeah, because ectoplasm. Not- I mean... Because, yeah, my, my Ghostbusters I mean, knowledge. Right, exactly. Right. No. I did he's, go to school. Yeah. He's, he's not... He's not dead, so he's not a ghost, but he's ectoplasmic, so he is a ghost. I thought, yeah, I thought being ectoplasmic meant he was dead. It <laughs> just. Yeah. Uh, we need to get Bill spirit, Murray. On spirit the thing. Uh, let's, call this, uh, sh- hand, right? let's call this Schrodinger's ghost. Okay. okay. All right. Let's. <laughs> You're a scientist. <laughs> well, it'll it never come up again, but let's. <laughs> <laughs> Krauss's condition increased his psychic abilities, allowing him to give dead spirits a temporary physical form. He can take possession of any he can take possession of any physical form lacking a soul, such as the corpses of deceased humans and animals. He once inhabited a dog and another time he inhabited a moose. <laughs> I inhabited a moose once. That was an angry mounty. <laughs> I had to sleep in one like a tauntaun. Yeah, I was going to say, was it like Han Solo with the tauntaun? (laughs) 
Smell <laughs> worse on the inside. Isn't the inhabited moose a uh, Canadian sex position? <laughs> I think so. Probably. Involves syrup. It has to do with antlers. It, it all has to do. Uh, Krauss is immune to possession by other spirits, malevolent or otherwise. Uh, while a time limit on transition remains unclear, Johan must, in general, maintain possession of a physical form to avoid dissipation and the end of his existence. So he can, like, get in a bottle, I guess, if he needs to in a pinch. He can, like... Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere he can I, be... I mean... Continue. Pour out a Coke and climb it. I don't think I... It, I don't think I ever read any... Well, no, I think I came across... And at some point in the the Hellboy comics that I've read over the years, um, I I thought I remembered uh, this character, but uh, my personal knowledge is non-extensive. It's okay. However, in the comics, uh, Krauss was spelled with one S rather than two in this movie. Probably changed to two S's for the movie solely for the Nazi joke. That joke uh, nailed. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, it worked so. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I had, uh, I didn't have very many notes, uh, Princess, Prince Nuwada, Princess Nuwala, and King Baylor. they all sound like legitimate mythological names. Um, I don't think they had much comics history. I ran out of time to uh, research the names properly, but I do recall that Nuwala uh, is a recurring fey folk character in the Sandman. Oh, yeah, uh, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. A, a brief right, Google on that. Uh, he's the first king of the myth- mythological uh, Irish people. He had a oh, silver the, arm. The Feyland, the yeah. 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 So, so the name Nuada is from from mythology. So okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, actually, they they do refer to uh, Irish stuff. For, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I, and have, I, believe, I have a point later. Where uh, I believe long. King Baylor was speaking Gaelic. It yeah, yeah. That's, yes, that's what it says. The subtitles told me that, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Al, uh, for that uh, uh, comic book uh, uh, history. <laughs> yes. Um, it brings us to the production of the film. Oh, boy, too. The Golden Army was directed by Guillermo del Toro. Uh, we looked into his... Uh, his uh, filmography a bit when we did the first Hellboy and also when we did Blade 2. Um, right. This was uh, written by Guillermo del Toro and Mike uh, Mignola. Mignola? Um, creator of. Yeah, creator of, uh, the, uh, uh, of the comics. So he got a story by credit on this one. So he got, a, he got paid a little bit for the movie. Um, for him. Oh, yeah. Um, one, one thing to note, um, this was largely an original story, whereas the first Hellboy um, comic was based on the first graphic novel, Seed of Destruction. Yeah, this one yeah. was largely um, just written for this movie. If um, it felt more yeah, movie like in that way, yeah, I, I thought. Yeah, but they uh, they mentioned that they did try and draw a lot of like real mythology. Mm. <laughs> real mythology. <laughs> real mythology. <laughs> well, I mean, versus just yeah. completely Legit. made up by them at that moment. Yeah, it has yeah. history. Totally. Yeah. But, <clears throat> All the right. Hellboys always had There's one air real mythology throughout, right? Some of the demon stuff is real. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's it I mean it's ha- it's used it, I mean, I believe. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Um so all right, so this film stars uh Ron Perlman as Hellboy. Uh we've spoken about him in depth in the two previous <laughs> movies we uh, I mentioned. And I'll uh, just I'll say what I sure I said it the first time, but like Chris Reeve or Robert Downey Jr. Like it's one of those castings where how could you imagine somebody else? Right. He, he well, just, and we get it we get someone more. else though. And I think he probably I haven't seen that one yet. I think he probably did a good job as well. Yeah, but I'm like, sure he yeah, did good. Ron, Ron Perlman was physically built to be a little boy. It's yeah, not I the was. same. It's really not the same. Not, Jim Hopper is not the same as Ron Perlman. Did you? Just no. face looks like a no demon. one is like the yeah. Perlman. Yeah, Ron yeah. Perlman is yeah just made for this role. Ron, Ron Perlman's presence as Hellboy um, really defined Hell, the character of Hellboy for a lot of people. Um, in the comics, um, they didn't talk a lot. There was not a lot of dialogue right. in the Hellboy comics. 
um, a, a small amount of quippiness, but not to the extent that uh, they let Ron Perlman quip. And, right. Uh, mm. and, and yeah, he's just built for it. Yeah. He's yeah. just an MC teenager. Right. And, and you're right. He, he defined it almost more than they did in the comics. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's similar to Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. Like, he made yeah. the character in a lot of ways. Yep. Um, Selma Blair's back as Liz Sherman. Uh, Doug Jones uh, is back in the suit for Abe Sapien with voice by David Hyde Pierce. Oh, no. it was? Him? Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no yeah, I didn't think so. That's Doug Jones, man. Oh. It is Doug Jones. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, okay I'm right, sorry. Right. Yes. That's right. David um, Hyde Pierce. The, the, Wait. Was in the first movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the first one. Yeah, Doug yeah, Jones did the voice for this one. David Hyde Pierce yeah. did not return. Okay. Yes. Which was which was awesome because like the first few scenes with Abe Sapien where he's speaking, like mm-hmm. I caught his voice. It's like oh, David Hyde Pierce. I know that voice, um, but I couldn't place it. And I looked it up and then saw that it was Doug Jones. But he sounds exactly like he does in um, Star Trek Discovery because uh, he's uh, Captain Saru, or mm, Commander yeah. Saru, then Captain yeah. Saru. Um, but he sounds just the same, and he sounds great. Yeah. yeah, Al mentioned this to me yesterday, and I before I watched the movie, in the moment that he spoke, I was just like, "Oh, Saru, that's really cool." Yeah, and good for Doug. Yeah, actually, you know. Yeah, he a lot of times he didn't get to speak roles. when it was like, "Why not?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. It actually, he it, it sounds more natural in this movie, not to be yeah. little David Hyde Pierce's voiceover in yeah. the first one, but, but you have to it sounds it. more natural in this movie. I mean, voiceover yeah. is always going to be a little less natural than when the person you know, on set is doing the the yeah. vocal performance. It just always is. Well, and D- Doug Jones in Discovery is essentially playing this character. It's weird to see him mm. as a fish man in multiple things now. <laughs> <laughs> fish well, man. Well, we found out women love them. Yeah. Was it Doug Jones in, um, in a, what was that movie that he won the Oscar the for? Love of Water. Or the, uh, water the Shape Del of Water. Movie, yeah. Was that Doug Jones in the suit there? The Shape of Water. I don't even know. God, I'm. Who was it? it up. Yeah, it was. It, it was. So. It was definitely Doug Jones. Okay. In yeah. wow. Shape of Water. It wasn't an actor. He's just I'm so sorry. tall. I'm sorry, Doug. He absolutely is an actor. He wasn't like a known blockbuster type guy. He wasn't an A list yeah, celebrity. Because again, him. you can't pay a couple million dollars to a Robert Downey Jr. and not show his face. Yeah. And obviously, that script was like, you can't, there's no face. That is his face. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's. He's got to like live around the corner from Del Toro. He's in everything that Guillermo del Toro makes. Yeah, it's like, can I borrow some like, milk? And would you put on this fish suit? <laughs> <laughs> For an unrelated matter, um, <laughs> Doug Jones also played the Angel of Death and uh, Chamberlain, the doorkeeper for King Baylor. Um, yeah, the weird snail-looking guy, right? Y- yeah, yeah, um, yeah. John Alexander and James Dodd both. Uh, did the suit work for Johann Krauss. There were two people that had to switch off. Um, the helmet was a entirely uh, practical effect. Um, cool. Yeah. Which, I, yeah, I thought that was cool. It's, I uh, like the whole thing. I like the things in front that moved up and down, like yeah. sort of like a crab's. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I sw- like, they really hit the, like, like mandibles and steampunk shit very well, way better than what we've seen in the past. This movie, this movie made me want to see Del Toro do a Star Wars movie. Yeah. yeah. I just keep thinking oh, how cool that would be. That would be. His production design is always just over, just beautiful. Yeah, it is. Um, so, uh, Seth MacFarlane voiced Johan Krauss. Um, we've never talked about him before. He's, I don't think... Has he ever been in a superhero been. movie? We did. I don't think so. Um, I don't think he's yeah. been in one. I don't. Um, Seth MacFarlane. You know the Family Guy guy. <laughs> we it's yeah. Seth, Seth MacFarlane. Ted. Yeah. Um, Orville. Yeah. yeah. The Orville. Yeah. yeah the Orville. Orville. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a good show. Um, he's and Brian, Brian mentioned to me yesterday that uh, Seth MacFarlane had a guest spot on an episode of Enterprise. Yeah. Oh, huh. Good for him. So, yeah, he's yeah, good for him. He's a also also huge Star Trek fan, and he got to do it. An incredibly talented singer. He I was is just a yeah, crooner. he is. 
man. He's released some American Standard albums, yeah, like the, those old every, Kerner songs. Every yeah. time he opens his mouth to sing, I'm just like, I'm surprised again. It's so yeah. cool. <laughs> he's a he's very so weird renaissance man he yeah. really is and but good for him i'm not like the biggest fan of family guy like i mean Same. but it's i gotta respect what he does i mean like it's been 20 years now i, I will say, say this he's done so much with what he the fame he found from family guy more than yeah. most people yeah. mm-hmm. right he parlayed it into a lot of their fame yeah yeah, he's politically active as well. well yeah. spoken in that regard. Um, and wasn't he yeah, famously and, supposed to be on one of the 9-11 flights? Oh, I don't know about that. God, I heard that. Wow, he was supposed to be on a 9-11 flight, but ended up like being late for the airport or something. Wow. So what are you saying? Is he like uh, secretly a plant from Al-Qaeda or something? <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> – I don't know. Plant. Um, um, I, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of sent as a plant. Sorry, go ahead. I will say that uh, I've said it before. Uh, the Orville is one of my favorite shows from the last couple of years. Yeah, that's good. Better than Trek in a lot of ways. Yeah, you know, most of the new Trek. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's I, I love it so much. Yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be on one of the flights that went into the towers. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. What lucky guy. Yeah. <laughs> In many ways. Yes. Hey, the least. Um, all right. So Luke Goss plays Prince Nuada Silverland. Ooh, his, I didn't know he had a last name. Um, oh, yeah. Silverland. Luke Goss. We've seen him before. Uh, he was in Blade 2. Um, he uh, was Jared Nomack. <laughs> um, it's so convenient that they found the guy that oh, looks yeah. like that. He was Nomack. He was the other day walking. Yeah. Yes. Super vampire. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, That's what I mean. Yeah, he, he just looks this way. The, the hybrid or whatever they called it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The apex guys. predator we were talking about. Um, yeah, so uh, he... Uh, uh, anomaly. Um, yes, he was an anomaly. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He. Uh, we have Anna Walton as Princess Nuala. Hmm. Uh, um, she was in a, the movie Vampire Diary, which is unrelated to the series The Vampire Diaries. <laughs> it's a totally different diary. Yes. This vampire went to camp. Um, <laughs> and also uh, mute, The Mutant Chronicles. The, yes. Yeah. Like just Mutant Chronicles. Chronicles. That's a, so, yeah. Vampire Diary, Mutant Chronicles. Chronicles uh, seem feels like uh, it has werewolf, more prestige. Werewolf Journal. <laughs> yeah. um, Frankenstein's podcast. <laughs> she was also, let's see, she was also in A Girl and a Gun, Five Days of War, The Halloween Kid. <laughs> God damn, if only she'd been in Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Yeah, she could have gotten, yeah. Uh, oh, right. Um... I thought maybe I, you know, I was, uh, yeah, I was waiting to see if she was someone I recognized. She, well, she, yeah, uh, nope. she's not. <laughs> um, Jeffrey Tambor was back as Tom Manning, John Hurt as uh, Trevor Brutenholm, uh, Brian yep. Steele, um, let's see, he played uh, the Mr. Wink, the giant cave troll. Um, played. yeah, he also played Cathedral Head, um, the troll who's the oh. owner of the map shop. He played yeah, like Fraggle Wump. <laughs> um, Fraggle Wump. He Fra- played Fraggle Wump. <laughs> he did play Fraggle Wump. <laughs> As the Scottish <laughs> troll, like the, the, the the one that pr- the the old lady that eats cats. Um, yeah, <laughs> writing that down. <laughs> Her name was Fraggle Wump. Okay, Crony Troll, which is a spice shop owner. Um, and we have, uh, Roy Dotrice as King Baylor, um, mm. who was, uh, wow. Aw, uh, he passed away in October, 2017. He was born in May 1923. He was a very, very old man. He mostly did stage, but, uh, he was in a bunch of television and film, mostly in England, it looks like, although he was in space 1999 as Commissioner Simmons. Uh, Magnum P.I. Woo. He was in Cheech and Chong's The Corsican Brothers. 
I got it. I, I love to love that movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he played Mozart's dad in Amadeus. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. an intense character. Yeah. Yeah. In history and in that movie. Um, yeah, so he's been in a bunch of stuff. He plays old British dudes a lot. Um or old as dudes old with British, British accents. Dude. Yeah. Not as an old dude. Dude. Yeah. Um, so uh that about rounds out our uh cast list there. Um We had a we had another Perlman in this movie. Did we? Um oh, it's uh, Blake Perlman. Blake <laughs> Perlman. She was she was one of the newscasters. Uh, um but I I tried to look her up um, briefly to see if she was like the daughter of Ron Perlman. And? Um, well, it didn't tell me conclusively. Whether she was related to Ron Perlman or Rhea Perlman. Um, or just wait, are they not related, related to each other? Rhea Perlman and... Wait, I'm different. just finding out now that Ron Perlman and Rhea Perlman aren't the same person. Holy shit. <laughs> no, when, no, when Rhea gets extra angry. Yeah, she just expands. <laughs> it's like her Hulk form. Just Carla. Yeah, just her apron shreds. I see him like, oh, Sam, God. I'm telling you. They're both They're both in the same room. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rhea Perlman. Um, this movie has um eighty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, wow, damn, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's a well liked film. Right? I agree. So, um, Me and the tomato nerds. Yeah, Felix L writes it's basically Men in Black without Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or aliens. <laughs> you take them out, then it's basically yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and that about brings us to the end of it um, guys you ready to jump into this thing I don't like Scruzy German clearance. <laughs> Scruzy clearance. here we go this is Hellboy 2 the Golden Army we open with the card that uh, gives us a little rundown on the origin of Hellboy tells us a little about the first movie then we Cut to Christmas Eve, 1955. I, I loved how succinct um, and effective the that was to just yes. like, yes, here it is. This is all you need to know. If you've never seen this before, if you've never read the comics, this is all you need this to know all. to enjoy this movie, to mm-hmm. understand this movie. Yeah. Boom. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Writ- written by the creator of, yeah, so cool. Yeah. And that's so much better than like <laughs> three minutes of like. Showing us the past three movies. Ridley Scott's Blade Runner entry. Oh, of, Lord. Right. Here are 45 years of history. And oh. they're iconic, and I like them, but like the scrolls, the Star Wars scrolls, yeah. you know, like oh, Trade sure. Federation <laughs> and stuff. It's like, <laughs> did that say, what did that say? <laughs> I feel like the princess is a man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what he looks like a lady. Um, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, Christmas Eve, 1955. Uh, John Hurt wants Hellboy to go to bed. Hellboy's a kid a at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Is tween Hellboy um, creepy or, or did it work? Oh, I, I mean, it was, it was, it was creepy. The whole scene worked it was cre- for sure, but I meant him to, looking at him. It was creepy and cute. Yeah, exactly. All That's right. what I thought. I that. I like how do you See, do I got 100% cute vibes from that. I was like, this is so endearing. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was. The whole scene was endearing. And, His like uh, messed up teeth and everything too. I thought like yeah, the one yeah. horn broken, like he definitely like fell out of a tree or something. Like Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a rambunctious kid who just wants to and, go and break windows. Yeah. And this this reminded me of okay, throughout the Hellboy comics they would show like a uh, younger Hellboy living yeah. with a broom. Um but the story I related to you last time about the the Pam cakes. Yeah. How he Mi- mispronounced pancakes and he continued throughout his life um just like that shot of him you know as a young kid and never learning how to pronounce a word yeah, yeah. A specific like, word like paschetti you know yeah yeah, yeah. That, you know, exactly it's, a, it's adorable and oh shit what was i gonna 
No, go ahead. Okay. Moving on. Um, so yeah, Moving on. Um, it's Christmas Eve. John Hurt wants him to go to bed. Hellboy wants a story first. He's watching Howdy Doody. Um, John Hurt tells him about a great war in the distant past. The so, elf. Yeah. That whole I'm sorry, that whole sequence um, was really cool. Yeah, with was, like the little wooden figure guys, like his imagination, mm-hmm. whatever well, it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great. It's a great way to do exposition. You know. So many lazy directors, it's just a voiceover or some shit. But like, it was really fun to watch what would have been an animated version of that book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so to, this- to put the to put the exposition exposition in relation to Hellboy's life, yes, instead of just throwing out this story, like right, is his his father read it to him on Christmas Eve way mm-hmm. back in the day. Yeah, see, that is good screenwriting. <laughs> That is right. what well, so many people just, miss. Yeah. Right. The mind comes of the child relates. visualizing it. So when mm-hmm. we get to see what it really is, it is very different. Yeah. Which right. is neat to do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. But and like Al was saying, like to actually like, yeah, we, we build character while also getting exposition instead of just tossing out some exposition. Right. It turns out that his life is on the line because of this main character. So, yeah, it doesn't just a little bit come around. It totally affects his life. Just, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, all right. Um, uh, so, in the distant past, an elf king, the elf king, <laughs> not just any elf king. <laughs> he did his Vegas comeback. Tour. Yeah, <laughs> he had a robot army built by goblins <laughs> that were loyal to him <laughs> as long as he was unchallenged for command. Uh, what do you think the goblins just had the best bid on the contract? Yeah, What's well, Lockheed's like in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the trolls were charging way too much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll talk about the troll market. Those prices up and down. Yeah, <laughs> the ball is a bear. Well, I mean, the problem, the problem is the shorts. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> troll shorts. The troll shorts. <laughs> The troll stock subreddits are off the hook these days. They they're, they're crazy. Um. So, all right. The uh... <laughs> sell cauldron. Sell. Sell. <laughs> He used his robot army against the humans, but then he was regretful. Um, he split the crown that controlled them into three pieces uh, and then had the army locked up underground. Um, Hellboy goes to bed. We get a CGI credit sequence. Um, I'm getting sick of CGI credit sequences. My God. Yeah. This was Gears, right? Yeah, it was yeah. Gears. Mechanical Gears, yeah. Magical machinery. Yes. <laughs> the ma- the magical machinery tour. <laughs> Which maybe it was just a tour of the uh, end fight location. I don't know. I'm giving it too much credit. I mean, yeah. It also, I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> After watching all these 2000s era superhero movies, I'm really tired of CGI credit sequences. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, so, all right. We meet an elf ninja guy. <laughs> Nuada, yeah, the prince. Who's spear dancing. And he has the noisiest spear ever. Did anyone else catch that? <laughs> because it was the first thing I noticed. Every time he moves the spear, it makes the metal against metal sound every oh, right. single yeah. time. Whether He's just spinning it in the air and it's going swing, 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 swing. <laughs> like, like it's clashing against another piece of metal constantly. And I noticed in the first scene, so it was distracting for the rest of the movie for me. <laughs> No, he spars with invisible trolls. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That explains it all. <laughs> Put a bow on that mother. Um, he's he's underground in the New York area. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a good thing all these all these all these European mythological figures hang out in New York, well, Ireland, because the movie references Ireland quite a bit. Several times it's factual and, you know, like uh, Al brought up earlier and, and brought in the, the mythology and shit. Yeah. Why is – okay, so maybe the prince is over there. Why is the elf king and this council, the council of elves and what have you, why is it under Manhattan? I Anybody assume know? they came during because the potato famine. <laughs> the, the they were – potato famine. They were persecuted by the – uh, Elven Protestant Church in England. <laughs> <laughs> they came over during the Troubles. Yeah, they yes, they landed at Goblin Rock. <laughs> God, 
<laughs> we didn't or land did a goblin rock. On them. <laughs> goblin rock. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, <laughs> um okay yeah i guess it's not important but they don't ever touch on that no and the troll market this ancient tro- okay so that's where the golden army is right no yeah. no no the golden army they have to uh, actually go to ireland for oh, you're right that they're in ireland. ireland you're you're right my bad okay. yeah Carry on. well oh, so it could also be that these are like magic entrances and the magical world doesn't exist literally in the physical places they're at like they're going yeah to a magical okay. place <laughs> the meat yeah um, all right. so it all just right. has many doors all over the world yeah it could be something like that i don't know <laughs> it was walt disney's vision <laughs> so all right uh he's got a big monster friend and he's plotting something um there's an auction happening um the the monster's friend is mr wink mr wink yeah. yes kind of fun but sounds so monstrous yeah uh, there's not just an auction happening there is a gala charity event happening yes there is maybe it's not charity maybe it's for the museum but you know what i mean yeah it is a there's people in tuxedos um yep. So, yeah, uh, he, they're selling a piece of the crown. He kills everybody there to take the crown um, using some tiny fairy creatures. Uh, um, so I noticed that um, before I even double checked it, um, the giant statue that later gets used um, to knock over whoever. Um, so that's the Venus of Willendorf. First yeah. of all, it's not huge. It's, the actual statue is about yay. Like um, and it was found in Austria. But the auctioneer says it was uh, found by the River Shannon, which actually is in Ireland, in the county that I think they land in. So. Huh. I'm going to point yeah. that out. I Thanks. learned about that in art class because that's the Name. painting that got discovered that got stolen from the U of A um, was oh, of that, I that statue. Yeah. Far out. It's a really yeah, abstract very well known, Well-known fertility goddess statue. Yeah. But, you know, it's certainly not a whole story tall. Hmm. Yeah, it was interesting seeing it blown <laughs> up. Big, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, um, right. yeah, that's a very interesting. Um, hmm. All right. So, um, yeah. All right. So then at the BRPD, Abe Sapium and Tom Manning. Um, what does BRPD stand for again? The Bureau of? Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense. Research and B- Defense. And what's that R? BR research research PRD. oh you said research first yeah okay. research and defense um yeah so uh let's see um yeah so they get word that uh that hellboy has been spotted there's pictures of him tom is trying to keep that under wraps um they go to find hellboy him and liz are fighting um, then they get word, they get called out for the uh, auction incident as they head out. Her, oh. yeah. her toothbrush is in the cat food. Yes. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's funny, they're down in this like you know, chamber where they're, they're supposed to be hidden from the world always. That's the protocols. But they're still having sort of a sitcom mad about you, sort of, like odd couple type shit. Like, yeah, it's funny. They're still having like a couple sitcom down underground in their little. Yeah. Well, and she's on fire the first time we see her too, which was interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah she's it's on fire. Though. She's on fire a lot here. Uh, <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> well, yeah. It um, is her power. Um, so, all right. Uh, they head out and Hellboy promises Tom that he'll be discreet and not let the public see him. They arrive at the auction house. Um, Abe discovers Liz is pregnant and then they're attacked by the creatures, which we find out are tooth fairies because they eat teeth. But <laughs> that was yeah, disturbing. Creepy. Yeah, it really yeah. was. They start was with the teeth. They start with the teeth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. their favorite. Oh, they, oh yeah. They'll when consume, they... They'll consume the whole body, but yes, they love the, the calcium. Delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one shot where they actually saw the one, we saw the one eating the tooth before he notices whoever. Yeah, it was creepy. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Really That's well done. Del Perfect. Toro all over. Yeah, yeah so Del Toro. Del Toro. Um, 
All right, so uh, they fight the creatures, and at the end, um, Hellboy gets blown out a window when Liz, like, fires up <laughs> the whole building. Um, he falls right into the middle of the press, accidentally revealing himself to the world. There was a lot of press at that uh, scene. Yeah. Um, and who is the dude carrying a wooden cooler <laughs> around with them? I don't know if he yeah. caught that. I don't mm. know if they even used it at any point. I also wanted to point out that those statues were probably uh, pretty calcified. Those two fairies get have eaten those. Oh, huh. that's lime, right? Yeah, yeah, mm. calcium, lime. You know, depends. Um, well, I mean, the vegan tooth fairies. <laughs> probably yeah, that's that. true. <laughs> they eat marble. Uh, um, back at headquarters, they're watching news coverage of themselves. They're on Jimmy Kimmel. Um. Tom reveals a new boss is being sent from Washington due to the publicity to try to keep Hellboy under control. Um, Meanwhile, underground, Nuada um, confronts his dad, the king. He wants to use the Golden Army to fight the humans. His dad's like, nah-uh. Then we meet his twin sister, Nuala, and Nuada kills his dad and takes his part of the crown. His sister flees, escaping him with the final piece. Then, back at BPRD, the boss arrives. It's Johann Krauss, who is a sentient ectoplasm in a deep-sea diving suit kind of deal. Um, he revives a dead tooth fairy who tells him um, that he came from the troll market. Um, they decide <laughs> to go look for the troll, mar- troll market. Rumor has it it's under the Brooklyn Bridge. Naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They've got a special... Which which end of the Brooklyn Bridge? Was it the east, east. end? Yes, yeah, the east end. Okay. It's a big bridge. Oh, I would like to point no, out... Um, I, I meant to mention earlier. So how many... Al, this is sounds like something that you would have made note of. How many, um, how many Golden Army robots are there? 70 by 70, so it's 4,900. No, I thought they said so, seven uh, times 70. I yeah. thought it was seven. I thought it was seventy times seventy. I thought it was yeah, seven. It was seventy times seventy. It was seventy. No, seventy. It was seventy yeah. times seventy. 70. So four thousand ish. Four thousand no, five thousand ish. Yeah. Forty nine hundred. Okay. No, around around five thousand. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Still not enough to take out our human the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. armed forces. No. No humans. Yeah. Well, they weren't uh, even breaking this up. I I think we'll get Can, there, but they. They can fix themselves. So yeah. right, yeah. but how much They're can they? If 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 they're actually blown to like like small pieces by you know a uh, surface to air or air to air to surface missile, you know how much or is going to be glass. left to repair itself? And also, gold is really soft. So if they're made of gold, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. if they're melted yeah. down, like like Selma Blair probably could have melted them down. In large part. That's yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. That was my uh, yeah. anyways. Um yeah, that's yeah, okay. we're not there yet. So all right. Um they uh go to the troll market. Um they see a a goblin disguised as an old lady that eats cats. They use her to gain entrance. That's the Fraggle Wump. The Fraggle, fraggle Wump. Wump. That, no, not fraggle the Wump. Fraggle Wump. Her name is Fraggle Wump. <laughs> oh right, no, the <laughs> that's her species not her name I thought her name was oh. Fraggle Wump no it's the species you're so ignorant throw come on man this is <laughs> her name culture. was Amanda <laughs> uh, um, alright Amanda hug and kiss <laughs> Amanda Fraggle Wump <laughs> Amanda Fraggle Wump just sounds sinister the more you say it <laughs> uh, um, alright so uh when they're inside, Abe spots the princess and follows her. She's picking up a hidden map to the location of the Golden Army. And she's attacked by her brother's monster, Mr. Wink. Hellboy. <laughs> that time it sounds like a <laughs> That sentence movie. right there. He was attacked <laughs> by her brother's monster, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Wink. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> this story took a dark. Yeah. Oof. Wow. <laughs> Elfin incest. That's mm. all I. 
Is this. there any other kind <laughs> that's worth? <laughs> it's all related. There are. There I are all Sometimes I start wor- sentences and I don't know where they're going. Um, so she's attacked by the monster. Um, Abe helps her escape. Hellboy arrives. She and Abe leave, and he ends up killing Mister Wink. Um, in that trash grinder that's just out in the street. Yep. That's, I, I assume that's what it was. It was just a general trash grinder. It's like their see, version of a, a um, incinerator or, com, or compressed. Yeah, yeah. The, they're incredibly efficient the, at at keeping their their whole place secretive. You know, because they have to yeah, keep the whole market right. secret. They they have to contain all of their uh, refuse. Yeah, you can't pack it out. Right? Yeah, it's got to so right. much so that I actually had the thought of like, do all those like legs of beef. Do they have to refresh those? Are they fake? Or <laughs> <laughs> mm. like need... troll has to get new beef every week. Yeah, Eat to em. keep up their their front. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, huh? Yeah, you'd think. Because again, like just... Al was this the garbage smasher. It's like <laughs> you open a door and then right off of an alley, and then you, right behind that door is a freezer door. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's where you want your walk-in. Definitely. Right? Your back door. <laughs> uh, um, all right. So uh, Nuada is informed about the death of Mr. Wink. <laughs> so he goes after Hellboy and company. Um, was he so building cool. the egg that he then released? Was that what he was doing when the little guy came in? <laughs> or was he, was he just playing with it? <laughs> he was playing with his egg? I think he was playing with his egg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's Gaelic for something, I know. Right. Um, all right. So, I'm sorry. We, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not yet. Go ahead. All right. So, yeah. Um, he releases it. It bursts forth like like a Pokemon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like kind a Pokemon. of. <laughs> um, the, and it's just a magic bean. Yes, yeah, it's just a jelly bean at, at first. Yeah, until it, until it finds water. Yeah, and then it grows into a giant plant monster, which is a forced god. <laughs> but it it's a plant monster. This was yeah. the prettiest uh, CGI sequence we've seen. It looked really good. I think so. Yeah, it did. and that 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 creature was cool. Yeah, yeah. You did have sympathy for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they did a good job of capturing that aspect of yeah. the character. But then it what's was, ironic uh, is we find out the elf prince just carried him around as a bean. So like, yeah. what life was he living? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was a it was an elemental, um, and it was the last of its kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. um, I'm how, assuming the last of the plant oh, elementals, not necessarily uh, uh, all the elementals. Josh, okay. I this was around this part. Um, I don't know if anyone noticed this, but right behind Hellboy in one quick um, scene, Hellboy's walking towards the camera, and there's a billboard behind him of a pregnant woman holding her belly, and it says, "It's a big decision. Let's make it together." Whoa! Um, oh, didn't notice that. Wow. So, yeah, like that's a, that's, a message. that's a choice. Wow. Yeah. Wild, I thought. Right. And he was, uh, well, apart from the abortion aspect of that, um, he was holding the, uh, he was protecting the baby that whole time. Yeah. yeah. He finds out um, he's pregnant. For, foreshadowing uh, the fact that he would be a good father. There was. Oh, right. But that's not what that bill board. Yeah. Right. Right. That billboard yeah. had very specific. Yes. Yes. It, done that. it, it did. But. Had the but, lady on it, just but, like, you know, but using health check up. Yeah, but using pregnancy as a as a motif. Um I noticed there was a number of like like themes running throughout this. There was a lot of stuff about teeth, there was a lot of stuff about babies and pregnancy. Um the egg. The egg, yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of themes running through. This is a very well written movie. Um I think so. So uh lots of symbolism. Yes. Yes. Um, Hellboy fights and kills the uh, elemental, saving the baby in the process. Though mm-hmm. afterwards, the public turns on him, seeing him as a dangerous monster. Well, and so, he's confronted by, uh, what's the guy's name? Dathomir or whatever? Noada. Um, the blonde. Yeah. Um, the, blonde. Like, the three of us were unique. 
Right. But we're the last of our kind. If you kill this guy, he's the last of his kind. And that it's was making a cool an impression on him. Yeah, it was a cool conundrum. You know, do I save this yeah. kid, this baby? You, babies get made all the or time. Or the city. Yeah, or the yeah. city, you mm-hmm. know. Well, yeah, yeah. He was constantly being told you're going to have to make a choice. Um, Hellboy's very conflicted at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Al- already. He's already conflicted. Yeah. Um, right. But. Yeah. And so that's the subtext of the billboard. That's what we were kind of getting at. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's a big decision. Let's make it together. Yes. Yeah. That also relates. To, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Um, so, all right. They oh, were... and I'm sorry, either afterwards or right before someone in the crowd or some, a bystander is like, are you Hellboy? <laughs> no. Yeah, not me. Other oh, red guy. The Hellboy? No. <laughs> I'm Randall no, Hellboy. I'm a Hellboy. Yeah. <laughs> He's just right. cosplaying as Hellboy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so, all right. Uh, Hellboy ponders if he should be helping humans. Um, Liz tells him she needs some space and some time to herself and is leaving for a little while. Um, then Abe and Nuala spend some time together. They start to fall for each other. Uh, <laughs> women love fish, men. <laughs> that's true. That's what Del Toro thinks. Del Toro really Del thinks women love happening. fish, men. <laughs> yes. Very weird. <laughs> what, Brian? His imagination is very weird when it comes to women and what they want. Yes. Right. He's so broad and everything else, but romance, uh, just give me a fish guy and a lady. and like He's got to have a so. six pack and great pecs. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> girls. Some girls. Oh, skin. eyes that just Damn. make you want to. Like we can't afford Brad Pitt. Just let's we'll get a fish, fish guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Pitt is America's fish guy. <laughs> yeah, Legends of the fish guy. I saw that movie. <laughs> Legends of the Fish Guy. <clears throat> All right. So um, uh, let's see. Kraus and Hellboy have an altercation where Hellboy ends up breaking his uh, fishbowl suit. And then uh, Kraus just beats him up in ectoplasmic form. Um, he uses by, the lockers. Yeah. yeah. The lockers. That was fun. That was, yeah. yeah. Um, and he was having a shower beer all depressed. Yeah. Uh, Hellboy gets drunk late into the night. He gets Abe drunk with him. They bond over their mutual like, love problems. I'd like to point out that uh, his beer of choice is Tecate Light. Yes. Yeah. Which is terrible. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I like Tecate. I loathe Tecate Light. I, yeah. I, part one of me time I... Oh, One time ahead. I've had it, I there was no Takate at the Circle K, and the Takate rep was there. He's like, oh, try the Takate <laughs> light. And I did. And <laughs> the rep I don't him? regret it insofar as now I know not to ever drink it again. Yeah. Like Live and learn. Gum guy. It's um, like those Pilsners are light enough. Anyway. I feel like the light <laughs> choice was because it comes in a white can. Versus the Tecate, which comes in a red can. Oh, mm-hmm. right. It would have been too would red be on the and screen. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only the, reason why I think they chose that. So. These days it comes in a blue can. Oh, that's mm. fucked up. What? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Josh is shocked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost five years. Uh, yeah. Right. I, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm offended by that. It should be in a yeah, red can. Yeah, I can't can. picture it. And it does feel like an Americanization. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, Coors Light comes in a blue can now too, doesn't? Or Bud Light. Bud Light comes in a blue can. Coors can get yeah. fucked. <laughs> Co- I mean, <laughs> as as honestly, terrible beer. I I don't try to be a snob about it, but I mean, I don't. I I I haven't drank one of like the big three guys in years: Miller, Coors, or Bud. Yeah. Why? Regular Coors is okay. In a pinch, yeah. Coors Light, I won't. In a pinch. I won't go near Coors Light, but Coors the banquet. No, that's the banquet. Yeah, beer? Coors is yeah, the banquet yeah. beer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> M- Miller is Miller High Life is the champagne of beers. Right, it's fine. Coors it's is the one that they yeah. made movies about trying to get to the East Coast because they didn't imp- they didn't import. Yeah, Smokey and the Bandit is about that. Yeah, huh. <laughs> yes, crazy. Coors was my I'm dad. Like, These are fucking Coors in Colorado. You're fine. 
yeah. Georgia. Yeah. Coors was my you dad's. Song, huh? Well, they're thirsty in Atlanta. <laughs> Co- and they're here in Texas, <laughs> Um Coors, right. Coors was my dad's beer of choice in, in the 80s. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. all right. Um, Nuada arrives at BPRD headquarters and sneaks inside. He confronts his sister. She hides the final piece of the crown and tries to burn the map, but he fishes it out of the fire and makes an imprint of it on the the table. You you mentioned that um, um, Hellboy uh, drank into the night, but um, I think we skipped over that he he hears Abe listening to love songs and gets Abe drunk as well. I, I mentioned he he got Abe drunk too, good. but I didn't mention the okay. the love songs. But it was a fun scene. It was, and, and, and their acting drunk was not too bad. It was fun. Yeah. Well, and it's important to how we get to the end of the movie. Also, I think him being drunk is why he made the less honorable decision ultimately. Yeah. Mm. Step to the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anything for love, man. Yeah. <laughs> they won't. I won't do that. Um, so I won't drink in Coors <laughs> that's, that's what <laughs> Milo won't do <laughs> I won't do that um, so alright uh, he takes the map and Nuala and injures Hellboy leaving the tip of his magic spear lodged inside him yeah a regenerating <laughs> spear is kind of badass it was just the tip um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like the idea of the magical spear. It it was very much like uh, the spear that I forget the name of it that that they poked Jesus with when he was on the cross. Oh, the yeah. spear of the destiny. The, the spear of destiny. I think it it has that's a name. Not far off, but yeah, yeah. it does yeah. have a name. Yeah. It does, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, he tells <laughs> he, he he takes his sister hostage. And tells them that if they bring the last piece of the crown, he'll save Hell's boy's life and release her. He can't. He's kind of empty threats. He can't kill her. Like, as far as she's concerned, like, he can't do anything to her because he'll die, too. Yeah, I don't understand their connection. Oh, you're right. Their Corsican brother, like, you kill me, I die thing. As they're, that's and how that elf was, twins work, I guess. Yeah, and that was fine. But that's a good point you just made. Like then, how do you use her as a hostage or bargaining chip when yeah. you're vulnerable? I mean, to? what you're just gonna keep her around then? Like, oh, well, because you're right. That power, that ability is what you know will get there at the end. But that's very important. I mean, I hate to say this. How did she not just kill herself in the beginning? Yeah, if she was so concerned. She could have been like, "I'm just gonna fucking kill myself instead like of it, doing all this work." I've never to stop my way. brother because what are they gonna do? Lock him in a cell? Yeah, exactly. He's never going to stop. He said he is never going to stop. So, really, (laughs) never going to stop. I fucking love it. Can't stop, won't stop. I will do it forever. (laughs) Yo, wait, this is for you. (laughs) Um, So, uh, they discover they can't remove the spear. Um, Tip and Abe finds the final piece of the crown in a book. Um, where Tennyson, you, which she was quoting earlier. Yeah, exactly. Um, what else? I cut you off. Okay, no. They, <laughs> <laughs> um, they uh, use an imprint of the map to discover where uh, Nuada is. Um, Liz and Abe decide, contrary to their orders, to steal a plane and find Nuada to save Hellboy. At the last minute, Krauss decides to join them, bucking uh, on their trip. So, oh, okay. Sorry. He he says like, what what did he say? Uh, like, uh, to hell with the. It was, oh right, yeah. What did he say? Oh. Screw the clearance. Right, Screw he's the one that could give them clearance. <laughs> right, <he's laughs> the, that was confusing yeah. to yeah. me. He's higher yeah, than Jeffrey Tambor's character. Like, if he says yeah. they go, then that's just what they do. He's the boss. I don't know. Um, I want to throw out, I might have missed exactly where, but somewhere around here where there's a newscast talking about, maybe it was right after the tree died, but talking about the agency. And one point that the newscaster made was that they're in support of interspecies relationships. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter what it is. You know, elf, troll, duck, horse. (laughs) 
Did it's they like have a Kiss right to Nancy like Grace level of interpretation of what's going on? Right. <laughs> That's what you got from this. Demons are real, <laughs> <laughs> and they want people to fuck them. <laughs> Trolls live under the Brooklyn fucking bridge. They really do. <laughs> but the main thing we need you to take away is that they may try to come for our human women. <laughs> or like, how does that fish thing do it? I mean, we're I okay with that. That that feeds into <laughs> Hellboy's complex relationship with humanity, mm. I guess. But, yeah. You know. right. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, they a lot. They arrive in Ireland at the entrance to an underground goblin city, where they meet a, a goblin in a goblin style wheelchair. Um, <laughs> yeah, that didn't make any sense. He was like pulling himself around. Yeah. I mean, I think it was just ground. it was just a cool character design. I think it didn't. Yeah, it was. he was yeah, he was cut off at the waist like uh, Darth Maul. Yeah. Well, he said it was a fire in I think in the forge where the because yeah. he, he helped make the golden army. Yeah. 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 Um, somewhere in here, uh, Hellboy. No, well, it was before Island. But he's got his arm on a TV, and it's a clip from the Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, that was yeah. earlier, but yeah, that's got to be the most used. Because even in several ones we've done so far, there are clips of either the first one, but generally it's the se- this the Bride of Frankenstein that we see clips of. That's got to be like free or something. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm sure, yeah, it probably is in the domain, but it's always used as subtext. Yeah, more than I've seen anything else. A lot, yeah. Um. So, all right. Uh, uh-huh. let's see. Uh, the Goblin tells Liz that um, in uh trade for the spear tip. Um, he'll show them where uh, the 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 golden army is, but um, first they have to get it taken out safely. So he takes her to uh, underground to the Angel of Death. The Angel of Death tells Liz that she can save Hellboy, but Liz should know that it's Hellboy's destiny to bring about the end of the Earth. And it's, it's like Liz- I know this already. Yeah. That's that was the first movie. So but, but this- that's the decision. That the billboard spoke of. Yeah, the fact they brought it back, I think Guillermo del Toro really had a third one in mind, a third film. Oh, yeah. And uh, it sucks not? he didn't get to make it. Yeah. Well, he made cool stuff. He did. Yeah. He did. But I would have liked to have seen the end of this. You know, he, he definitely had something yeah. in mind with the end of the earth thing. There's right. still time. The whole cast is still around and they probably would. I mean, just the last scene, like it. <laughs> Little Shreks running around, but little Hellboys. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Okay, yeah, that's another thing I we s- could probably spend time on. How he and Liz do it. <laughs> I, I <laughs> we could, well, and we, and that's for our other podcast. It's going to be strictly about how Hellboy yeah, and Liz fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And or give birth to horned beasts. Yeah. Stay tuned. Just the tip. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So uh, Liz decides to uh, save him, and the angel removes the spear tip, giving it to the goblin. And are are we going to refer to that ever again? Because I kept calling, I called it spear point. Every time you say spear tip, Josh titters like. <laughs> All right, sorry, and butt head. sorry, teacher. <laughs> I mean, it's gone now. The goblin has it. It's not going to come up again. I was so right, disappointed cool. that it didn't. This was a this was a loose end. Yeah, I thought it was going to oh, yeah. be something. Yeah. I thought that was how they were going to kill what's his face without killing what's her face. Yeah, yeah. Huh. it could have come back in the third movie. Maybe. Yeah. Um. So all right. And nobody got time for that. Yeah. Um, say, it, say it again. What's that? Spear tip. The tip. <laughs> good. Good work, Josh. <laughs> you got. <laughs> I didn't laugh at the spirit too. So, yeah, solid as a rock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this is my shooting hand. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. So the goblin uh, takes them down into the place where the golden army is. They find Nuada amongst the sleeping robots, <laughs> and Abe gives him the last piece of the crown in order to save Nuala. Uh, they are now in Beth Mora. Beth Mora. Uh, that was that was the name of the place that the Golden Army was stored. Beth it was a great city one time. Yes. What do they call it? Something it of the Giants. 
the like mm. Valley of the Giants or something. Uh, the Giants Causeway in Ireland, Northern Causeway. Ireland. Oh. Right. Yeah. Well, and it was a situation of like um, has happened in our real world where like it was a beautiful uh, place that began making weapons and slowly became a dirty, terrible place. Especially, yeah. You know, you kill, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it's pretty cool device. Um, so, all right. Um, Nuwada awakens the Golden Army and they have to fight the robots. At first, they seem to be doing pretty well, but the robots can put themselves back together after being broken apart. They're essentially unkillable. Um, Hellboy. As we were told twice. <laughs> yes. Hellboy challenges Nuwada for command of the Golden Army and they fight one on one. Even though he wins, Hellboy can't kill Nuwada because it would cause Nuwala to die. <laughs> So Nuala just commits suicide, which she probably should have done like 10 minutes earlier. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, before the army. Yeah. Um, but I remembered the challenge thing from the story in the beginning. So yeah. right before the robots woke up, I thought that's what was going to happen. He was he did it afterwards. But yeah, yeah well, I was like, oh, he didn't he didn't challenge him. That's odd because they brought I, it up. I thought that right. she was going to challenge him. Oh, oh. Her, yeah, because she's royal heir to the throne. Yeah, yeah, that she's would have been Habsburg. that would have been interesting. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, they of course they had to fight the army for a little bit because it's a of Hellboy course. movie. Yeah, yeah, um, but that's one but, I and about. and uh, Kraus uh, possessing that one soldier was yeah that was pretty that cool. was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. That was yeah. Uh, so uh, Nuada, with his last breath, urges Hellboy to choose the magic world over the human world. He and his sister both die. Abe and her have a last moment together. Uh, Liz. Oh yeah, Liz told. I f- I forgot to mention. Liz told uh, Hellboy earlier that uh, she was pregnant. Um, another cool thing about the fight was how Hellboy eventually won. Um, how he grabbed him by the throat. Excuse me. Uh, and then he calls him a, a jumpy, slippery bastard. Mm. Yeah. But that's all. All he had, like, he just had to get a hold of him to, like, throw him down and grab his spear. Yeah. Right. Um, With but he five was... finger Mary <laughs> that only has three fingers in it. Right. Uh, um, yeah. You're right. Yeah. He just needed to get close enough. And the spear always kept him at bay and other uh-huh. He. Nuwata was outmatched strength wise. Definitely. Exactly. Yeah. But let me get but my his agility. Mm-hmm. It was like uh that the the, the mount- uh, Game of Thrones. The, the mountain and the and, viper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> exactly what happened. You should have gone for the eyes. Um so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um all right. So yeah, Liz melts the crown so the golden army can never be used again. Robots all fall apart. They go back to the surface. Tom and the BPRD is there. Um, uh, Liz, Hellboy, Abe, and Kraus all resign from the BPRD. And as they walk away, Hellboy and Liz plan their future. She tells him they're going to have twins. Twins. Roll credits. One will be taken to Alderaan. <laughs> One will be left on Tatooine. <laughs> um. They're the red that ones to go looking for. The the look on his face after being told that they're going to have twins is uh, his reaction was uncertain. Yeah. yeah. It, it went back to that. Scared, um, happy. <laughs> um, it went back to their lovable uh, sitcom dynamic that they first showed them. Yeah. Like, what? Twins? And, they, and they drop in well, the, the Barry Manilow uh, Can't Smile Without You for the yes. uh, end credits. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. Also very... Also very sitcom Yeah. Definitely. Um, I think it hit all its notes. I will say that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was just a really good, solid flick. I mean. As we pointed out, was. nothing was unnecessary. Every, pretty much everything meant something and delivered at the end. Yeah, absolutely. If it, if it promised to, yeah. Well written. Yeah. It looked gorgeous. Um, it was, Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have much bad to say about this. It was just good all around. And good as a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. And it was clearly. Imagine like. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say it was clearly building towards something. Yeah. Yeah, A third one would have been cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
It was uh, it was better than I remembered. I, I didn't remember disliking it, but um, I don't know if it just didn't impact me as much as the first that, one did. Yeah. But then on on the rewatch, it was I don't know. I'm still trying to decide whether it was better than the first one. I must. I think or, maybe. I thought it. I personally thought it was better than the first one. Because I particularly like when we join a universe that we're already familiar with. And that they don't have to spend a lot of, like Al said, that one title card was all Mignola felt you needed. And it was all you needed. So and I the, like when you're already, you sort of feel comfortable with the characters and, in the world. And you also, like I said before, you didn't have to have seen the first one to really understand what's going on. Yeah. No. I must not have paid attention to the first one because this one grabbed me as soon as John Hurt was telling that story. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is neater than I remember. Yeah. Um, That's how I feel. Well, we're, we're kind of talking about it. You guys want to go ahead and stick it on the list? Let's do it. Let's yeah. try. We've, we've, let's try. That's true. Um, let's see. Oh, here. Let me bring it up for us. Um, we yeah, have, just, gotta just have it up. So that we can all look. Yeah. Um, let's see. We uh, have the original Hellboy. Um, at number six. Um, let's see. Dang. Wow, yeah. that's high. Yeah. Pretty high. There we go. There we go. Now you guys can see it. Um, huh. Yeah. I think it is a little better than the first one. The first one is not bad, obviously. We, we didn't think so. Yeah, we liked but it. I liked this more. I liked this more. I, I think I liked it more than the first one, definitely. Um, uh, Brian. What do you think? Uh, I'm kind of split. I don't know. I like the first one. I think I like the first one more okay. because the way that it built the, the world, um, uh-huh. whereas this did drop us back into it. The first one did a really good job. It, t- it took a while, but it did a really good job of establishing the universe that we could believe that this adolescent demon basically was a grown man. Yeah, I'm cool with having it be lower than Hellboy. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I like it better than Unbreakable. Um, oh, yeah. Blade was okay. Batman Returns is good. Superman 78 is now down there. At number nine, yeah. yeah. Um, wow. And then we've got the first two X-Men movies. I feel like this was probably better than the first X-Men, at least. Maybe the second. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the second. I think it's better than I kind of like the first well my only issue with this was the end with the fight against the golden army itself golden army being the title of the movie yeah, yeah it was a lot it wasn't as, it, it was anticlimactic i guess mm-hmm. um, yeah instead of it being like a culmination of like oh cool this is building the universe like you'd said it felt like it was building to something but mm-hmm. it, that aspect of the movie built to nothing that that's true you the, know, we, the... melt, we melted the crown and it was over I don't know if I could put it above Superman 78. I don't. But we have the first one and those two X-Men above it. It's uh, perplexing. <laughs> it is. Um, I don't know. Al, you care to weigh in? Uh, <laughs> um, that was a yeah, heavy sigh. Um, what about before or after Blade? I think it's better than Unbreakable. I definitely think it's better than Unbreakable. Sure. I think it's better than Blade for sure. Yeah. Um, it was. See, Superman seventy eight, um, while good, was long and drawn out. Uh, that was a this, film. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with anything above Superman seventy eight. Okay. Um, I was just surprised at that. I mean, I think it's just because um, you know superhero movies so have gotten so much better <laughs> over the years. Yeah. Like, yeah. For the reason Al was saying, yeah. X2 was really tight, too. Um, okay, I want to put it between X2 and X-Men. Okay. Um, so that would put it at 8. That's my I, proposition. I can live with that. Um... <laughs> You'd be amazed at what I can <laughs> live with. Right. Do, do you want to refine it at all, Thoreau? No, between the two X-Men seems pretty fair to me. Brian, what are you thinking? Yeah, I, I could see it being after X two before X Men. <laughs> Josh, if that was the 
Well, yeah, I'm down with that or my original, which was either side of Blade. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm fine with in between X-Men. <laughs> I'm in between X-Men right now, so I, <laughs> All right. I don't know who to choose. I'm going to do it then. I'll put it right. at number eight between the two X-Men. So uh, let's see. Oh, boy. Two. And again, Thoreau mentions it, but dear listeners, uh, please let us know if you disagree with these rankings at all. <laughs> I would love to hear what you think. <laughs> yeah, oh, our rankings Maybe are you crazy. think Superman 78 fell too low. Tell us why. Yeah, it's it's at number 10 right now. And, um, Tell us in your elf diary. There's a good chance it could fall out of the top 10 because next week we are going to be watching The Dark Knight. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Woo! I watch that movie all the time. <laughs> it's <really good. laughs> yeah, it's a really good movie. It's a very good movie. Um, yeah, so uh, that's going to be an interesting one next week. Um, so uh, tune in for that one. Um, I haven't revisited it in a few years, so I'm looking forward to watching oh. it again at least. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, watching, and thank you for listening to Harmless Phosphorescence. This has been your host, Mr. Dee Dee Doo Doo. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, I'm Josh CC, and I have a nice elk face. <laughs> I'm Brash, and I would die and do dishes for you. I'm not an Alaric Weber. I'm a tumor. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.